I would like to present Jakob Tom Linsen. He's going to talk about deploying multi-GPU workloads on Kubernetes in Python. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So yeah, I'm going to talk about Dask, Kubernetes, GPUs, and Rapids. And I'm going to do some live coding. And I have 20 minutes. So this is all going to go wrong. There's going to be lots of URLs. Take note. But I hopefully you'll learn a bit about something of one of these topics. I'm going to take like a kind of an opinionated trajectory through deploying a thing, building a thing. Um, but let's do a little bit of overview and intro. So what is Rapids? Rapids is kind of uh, it's a couple of things, right? It's like a, it's a distribution of open source Python libraries for doing GPU accelerated things. Um, now we have some of our own libraries in there. We have QDF, which looks and feels like pandas, but uses the GPU. We have QML that looks and feels like scikit-learn, but uses the GPU. QGraph that looks and feels like NetworkX. You get the idea. We're kind of mimicking existing things you should be familiar with. Um, but also, there's lots of other things that we kind of consider part of the Rapids ecosystem. So XGBoost, Dask, PyTorch, like common stuff. We really care about interoperability. We care about contributing to other projects. We care about making, making all this stuff work together. The whole goal of Rapids is just like GPUs plus data science plus Python. Um, so here's like a very quick example. You can see, in many cases, you can swap out your imports if you have an NVIDIA GPU and just get some nice kind of performance benefits. Now, like, all benchmarks are wrong, but some are useful. This kind of just gives you a rough idea that you know, swapping out some imports can make things go faster um, and save you some money, which is, which is always, always fun. But the, the thing that I often like to talk about is we spend a lot of time as, as NVIDIA talking about like, how much faster and more cost-effective GPUs are, but they're also like, kind of scary to use. Right? You spin one up on the cloud, and you forget about it, and you go for lunch, and you've spent $50 for some reason. And like, that kind of can outweigh the, the benefits, right? So I, we're putting a lot of effort into like, deployment documentation, tooling around making that kind of easier, reducing the risk, making things less scary. And Dask is one of those tools that we find really helps us deploy these workloads. We can both deploy uh, to the cloud, and we can also scale out and, and do all sorts of fun stuff. So Dask has kind of a similar vibe to the Rapid stuff. It has a NumPy-like API. It has a Pandas-like API. It has distributed algorithms that kind of chunk up your operation, allows you to do out of core, and allows you to do distributed operations on. You know, if you want to do something to a data frame, you can kind of map over a large data frame and do, do cool stuff with. And because QDF follows the Pandas API, you can also just use QDF inside Dask. So you get like scale out many, GP, uh, many workers doing lots of work on a distributed data frame, but then you can give those workers GPUs and have like a big distributed GPU workload, which is what I'm going to talk about here. So this kind of shows the, the, how we think about a workflow in Rapids of kind of having your data preparation. You can do some kind of analysis, whether that's model training or, or something else. And then you have some visualization at the end. This is kind of a, a common PyData stack. With GPUs, you can kind of swap out all of those boxes. There are like equivalent boxes, and you can, you can kind of move onto those. And I'm also, as part of this demo, I'm going to show like an XGBoost workload. It's like a nice thing to... to pick on because it integrates well with Dask, it integrates well with GPUs. It, it's just a nice thing um, to use and show, show training a model. So if we get that far in the demo, that would be great. Now, I write code on this thing, which doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU in it. Put your hand up if you write code on a thing that has an NVIDIA GPU in it. That, that's more, that's more than I expected, actually. Like, lots of people sit in front of like, nice, thin, shiny ThinkPads or MacBooks, and they don't have accelerated hardware. And so like, uh, a reasonable thing to do is to reach to the cloud to get some GPU resource for some period of time. It doesn't have to be like cloud in terms of like AWS, although it can be. Um, it could be like an HPC. It could be some workstation that you have squared away in the corner of your office, like I do. Um, but whatever it is, it's very common to like reach into some other resource to get a GPU. Ideally, you only grab it for the period of time that you need it. You pay for it for a small chunk of time, and then you, and then you give it back and let somebody else have it. Um, so we're kind of focusing a lot on that at the moment. We have great documentation on deploying all of these workloads. It uses Rapid, it uses Dask, um, it uses Spark, it uses a whole bunch of things. So go and, go and check out those documentation uh, tools if you're kind of interested in, in deploying this stuff. But for this example I'm going to talk about today, um, 
we're going to use Kubernetes. Uh, the reason I like talking about Kubernetes uh, to like a, a broad audience is it's this like great unifying thing, right? It doesn't matter which cloud you're on; they all have Kubernetes. It doesn't matter if you're on-prem; you probably have Kubernetes. <laughs> like any modern HPC you buy these days probably has Kubernetes. Um, so let's use that as our as part of our stack, just to uh, give us a common ground. Although you don't you don't need Kubernetes uh, often. But in this example, we're going to have GPUs at the bottom. That's the thing you want to do some nice fast work on. We're going to rent that from someone. Uh, there's a nice list of cloud providers there, but whoever you use is fine. Uh, we're then going to have like the Kubernetes layer to give us a nice unifying API. And then we're going, to, we're going to install something called the Dask operator. This is like a plug-in, an add-on to Kubernetes that makes Kubernetes aware of Dask clusters as like a concept. A uh, Dask cluster is a scheduler plus some workers. You connect a client to the scheduler and say, do stuff. It dispatches it to the workers. The operator allows us to treat that as like a, a, an object type in Kubernetes language, right? Um, we have like a, a controller and some custom resources. And then on top of that, we have our Rapids workload, whatever you want, to, whatever you want that to be. In this example, it would be you know, doing some XGBoost stuff. So now I'm going to try and demo this, and we'll see how this goes. Um, it may not go, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to make this much bigger. Now, before I got up here on stage, uh, I started a, a Kubernetes cluster on Google Cloud with some GPUs. I ran a command uh, that looked a bit like this one. It was exactly this one. Um, however you get your Kubernetes is fine. This is how I got my Kubernetes. Um, it's just creating, it's created me three machines on AWS. I gave those machines T4 GPUs because they're kind of, they were, they were what was available this morning. Um, and I, you know, I chose a region of where to start that. So I now have a Kubernetes cluster. Um, let's not worry anymore about how to get one of those. But if I do something like uh, kube control get nodes, we should be able to see I have three nodes. Right? These are my machines. This is my cluster. I can scale it up and down. I can add more, remove stuff. That's all great. Now, what I need to do after this, I'm actually going to come out of this so I can copy and paste from my own slides. Um, we need the our NVIDIA drivers, right? We have nodes. We have Kubernetes. We need to tell it what to do. The magic way on Google Cloud is, is to run this command from the Google Cloud documentation. Um, in, in other Kubernetes clusters, you probably use the NVIDIA operator, uh, which you can find uh, online. But that's fine. I've installed my NVIDIA drivers. Installing NVIDIA drivers should be that easy. Note the should, but in this instance, it is this easy. Now that we have NVIDIA drivers on our Kubernetes cluster, I now need the Dask operator. Now, this is another thing that I can install nice and quickly here with a Helm install. And what this will do is it will create our custom resources in Kubernetes. This is like the API extension that allows us to create a Dask cluster as like a thing. Um, there's a few other custom resources that are useful in here. Um, it also creates a, a controller running on the cluster. So this is some little bit of Python that just speaks to the API and says, what do I need to make? And I say, oh, make a Dask cluster. And it goes and, it goes and actually does the thing. So we now have a Kubernetes cluster um, with GPU support. Uh, well, we, we'll do soon once they wake up. Um, we have GPU support and Dask. So now let me do something like I can say, instead of doing like kube control get pods or services or deployments or whatever Kubernetes thing, I can say kube control get Dask clusters. Kubernetes now knows what Dask clusters are, right? I don't have any yet, so it's telling me I don't have any, but that's fine. Um, you know, if I just said get me things, it would say I don't know what I don't know what that is. So it now knows what Dask clusters are, and that's great. Um, and I can, I can check to make sure that the Dask operator is, is kind of alive and well. Uh, maybe, if my command works. Yeah, OK, the Dask operator is alive and well. I'll fix that before I put the slides on, online. Um, now, let's jump back into Slideshow for a minute. There's a few different ways that we can create Dask clusters now on our Kubernetes cluster. The kind of Kubernetes way of doing this is we write a giant YAML file that describes exactly what our Dask cluster should look like. This is great if you're kind of a DevOps person or if you're kind of in IT and you care about managing your cluster state and resources. We get asked for this a lot um, within Dask. It's like, how can we do things in the most Kubernetes na native way possible? And if you're a diehard Kubernetes person, awesome. Manifests, go for it, have fun. Um, but then that is like the, the super user mode. And we've added a whole bunch of stuff on top of it to make this usable and friendly um, to other people. 
So the first thing we have, which we had very recently, as you can see, we have this Dask space Kubernetes space gen space cluster command. This is installed when you um, install Dask and Dask Kubernetes, pip install Dask and Dask Kubernetes, you get these command line tools. You can just run that command, and it will spit out the YAML that's on the side there. Um, and that's, that's really super useful. Now, the other thing we can do is we have a Python class to also create our clusters. And if you've deployed Dask in any way, uh, you'll probably have um, used one of our cluster manager classes. We have like local cluster is the one that people come across a lot. But there's kube cluster and slam cluster and pbs cluster and yarn cluster and whatever your favorite deployment platform is, we have cluster managers for. Um, and the way that this works is you, you import the, the kube cluster command, uh, the class, you instantiate the class, and a, Kubernetes, a, a Dask cluster appears, and in this case, on, on Kubernetes. And all this is doing under the hood is it's generating that big YAML file um, and then giving it to Kubernetes and then kind of adding all sorts of extra bells and whistles on top. So there's a method to get logs. There's a method to scale workers up and down. There's a method to shut the thing down. There's, there's all sorts of different methods to make your life easier coming at this from a, a Python side. Now, if you give it no keyword arguments, it just generates a DAS cluster, something very generic. But then there's a bunch of kind of simple keyword arguments you can specify. Now, it's very small, but up at the top here is, is an example of using Rapids. You want to say, oh, we want the Rapids container, not the DAS one. Uh, we want the worker command to be like the DAS CUDA worker. This is like the magic DAS GPU worker. Uh, we want to say how many workers we've got. We want to add some extra resources. Tell the cluster, our pods need GPUs. Make sure that they've got GPUs. You can set environment variables, do all sorts of other fun, fun things. Um, now, that CLI command that I mentioned before also takes all those same arguments. So if you want to just kind of generate some YAML, um, store it in a file, store it in, in whatever way you want to do so you can reproducibly create this same cluster, you can do it in Python, you can do it in Bash, you can do it wherever. Um, I'm going to just take this and run it. And this, this is that same command as before. So we're going to start with the Rapids cluster. Uh, which is just using our, our container that's got all the GPU libraries and all the bits and pieces installed. We're going to say we want GPUs. I'm also going to throw in this magic dash dash Jupyter flag here. This is something that's relatively new in Dask. But when you start the Dask scheduler, uh, you can add dash dash Jupyter to that. And it just starts Jupyter alongside the Dask scheduler in the same web server. So if you've ever used Dask uh, before and you've accessed the Dask dashboard in your browser to see what's going on, um, Jupyter can integrate with that. You can go to like slash Jupyter slash lab on the Dask dashboard, and you have like a full Jupyter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that as part of this demo um, here. So if I just paste this in here, I should be able to say, uh, let's get rid of the kube control apply on the end first. So if I run this, it will just spit out that big YAML file. Um, Ooh. Don't scroll, it goes funny. Let's just put this into more so you can see what I'm doing. Um, this will generate the YAML file. This is what Kubernetes needs to know to, to generate the DAS cluster. If you're not into Kubernetes, don't worry too much about this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pipe this into kubectl and say, make this, make this thing. Kubectl apply this spec. And Kubernetes just says, OK, I've made a thing. Uh, and if I do like, uh, Q control get pods now, we can see my DAS cluster has appeared. You might think that's very fast. I have cheated a little bit because this is a talk. I pulled the container image ahead of time onto the nodes so that you're not sat here watching a container image download because that's boring. But you can see creating this DAS cluster resource, we got a DAS scheduler and three DAS workers. Now, if I, um, if I just port forward this, uh, so we, have a, we can do DAS uh, Kubernetes port forward my cluster. This will forward the dashboard and the Dask ports locally onto my laptop. Annoyingly, I found a bug in this this morning, um, which I will fix later. But let me just uh, cheat and do this the, um, the old way. Uh, this would be like rapid scheduler. And we want the Dask dashboard port. Yeah. Oh, something's already listening on that. Did I? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I had a, I had a Dask thing somewhere else. Let me get rid of that. OK. Now, I am just going to pop this open a second. If I open this up, I can now access the Dask dashboard of my cluster running in Jupyter. Um, and if I go to Jupyter slash lab, this is the bit that may or may not work. 
but let's find out. This should open Jupyter, running in my Kubernetes cluster, running on Google Cloud, um, and we can get on and run through our notebook. Now, like I said, this talk has got like a lot of stuff in it, and it's hard to get through everything. I'm not going to get all the way to the bit where I run the, the workload. The main thing I want to just show you, if I pop open the terminal, is if I do NVIDIA SMI in here, and make this much bigger, you can see, oh, you can, maybe you can see. You can see we have our GPU here, right? And all of our Dask workers, uh, if I do from dask.distributed import client, oh, not in caps, client equals client. I don't need to tell the client where the cluster is because it's in the cluster. Uh, so this is kind of all magically configured. But if I connect my Dask client, you can see it's connected directly. And if I just pop down my workers, I get three workers. Each one of these gets a, a GPU. And we can now do our kind of fun Dask workload using our, our accelerated GPU libraries. Now, if I just skip through, I'm not going to do the workload demo because I've run out of time, which is training a model. But you can go and find this workload here uh, in our examples. Um, there's a whole ton of interesting examples here. One is doing this, where you share the Kubernetes cluster between a team, and you have everybody kind of balancing out each other's uh, resource requests. It's a really interesting notebook, so go and check out any notebooks in here. Um, that's what it would have looked like if I got to the point of running it uh, with the DAS dashboard showing what my GPUs are doing. Um, yeah, come and do rapid stuff. It's fun. There's loads of us. Uh, this slide is the one that I want you all to take a picture of, because it has the useful links. This is the Rapids deployment documentation. This is the DAS Kubernetes documentation, and then this is where I will upload slides uh, and, and other bits of the talk that I didn't get to. Um, so thank you all for, for bearing with my high-speed talk. I hope this has been useful. And uh, come find me at lunch if you have any questions. So thank you so much, Jacob, for your talk about rabbits. Uh, um, do we have some questions? Great talk, thank you very much. Uh, I have a question here, slide 13. If you can just go back, there is an example of the architecture, how the GPUs are accessed, etc. Yeah, sorry for that. Well, I'm remembering the uh, number. 13. Yeah. I'm pressing. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. What about uh, bar metal GPUs, like not cloud GPUs? Is there any difference on the setup, or it's exactly the same? There's no difference. You just, you just pull out the cloud layer. You just have your nodes, Perfect. you install Kubernetes on it, you install the driver, everything's exactly the same. Great, thank you. More questions? OK, so you can reach um, Jacob later if you want, if you have more questions. And thank you, thank you so much, Jacob, for your talk.